Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And uh, I hope you're all keeping safe and well. So, here we are. We're at the main project of the layout, which is uh, this station. And uh, we're so close to completing this project. So, what's holding this up? Let's go and have a look. So, here we are back at the bench, and this is the hold up. Um, we had to wait for some plastic strip, it's turned up, and I'm four hours into the second side of this roof. And if I just turn the camera slightly, you can see how much I have done already. So there's the edge. And we're just slowly working our way along this roof. So now you're thinking, oh, it's a carbon copy of last week's video. But I can assure you it's not, because last week we focused on making these windows. But now, this week, we're going to focus on the panels. Um, we know that the strips are following the rafters, as it was, or the trusses. And we know they're approximately 30 millimeters apart. So if we just zoom you in a little bit. So there we are. We're approximately 30 millimeters apart. So we're marking them, or we're marking the centers at roughly 7.5 millimeters from the center to the center of 7.5. And if we measure the center, we'll end up at 15 millimeters exactly. And then we just mark the center of that at 7.5 again. So let's just give us a guideline for putting in the strips. Um, looking at this cladding texture we've got here, um, it seems to be a carbon copy of what you find on top of churches. Um, recently took a trip to Bath City and I was in awe of the buildings that are there. Now if you haven't been to Bath City uh, I suggest you go and have a look. And this is all we're doing here. We're just gluing in these strips. And although we got the mark at the top we're just checking to see if it's parallel. Before I stick the next one in, I'm checking to make sure that there's no gaps. Make sure we've got nice snug fits. Um, this quick contactor glue just absorbs into the card straight away. So you've got to be pretty quick in putting in your plastic strips. It does hold it, it does stick it. But you've got to be pretty quick about it before it all absorbs into the card. And just to make sure that the gap's the same. And it's just the centre one. see it drying out already. We still have a little bit of um, juggling time, if, as it were, to um, straighten them out if they're a little bit um, skewy. If. Now then, 
what we do in here is we add a little inserts so as we've got the one there so we miss one and then put one in which is there roughly about 25 mil then we miss one and then we put one in just about there but I'll not do it just yet I'll wait till it's all dried out and then we continue so on and so on and so on um, the church roofs have this sort of cladding and um, the the one that we what I was looking at was a, a pale green maybe that's the uh, con contamination of the lead roof or whatever they've used um, but uh, yeah so that's what I'm going to focus on and obviously once I've got them in I can use these lines here to put in the glazing as we continue along so now we're just uh, measuring from the center of that angle there 25 millimeters on the long leg miss one and then 17 millimeters on the short leg and then we just glue in the small pieces but before we glue them in we just check to make sure they're gonna fit and trim them if need be uh, the little pieces should be Roughly about six and a half millimetres. A little bit more. And there we go. That's how we do the cladding. Right, so now we're back on the glazing strips again um, with this uh, 0.8 by 0.25 um, plastic strip. Um, I probably haven't mentioned this before, but um, after a few strips, you get a buildup of super glue on your um, toothpick. And I like to keep the toothpick as sharp as possible because you want the smallest amount of glue as possible on your toothpick and it does build up so after three or four strips I just peel it back so I get a nice fine tip again because uh, you only want the smallest amount of super glue on the strip itself so as you can see I've already done three quarters of this I'm just lightly putting a little bit of super glue on there very very small amount and just leave it for a while and then drop it down and there goes another one If you do find a little bit of ghosting when using super glue, I've got a little tiny bit in that corner. You probably can't pick it up on the camera. Um, just a cotton bud with some ordinary water on it and then just give it a wipe. And that should get rid of it. But um, try not to use the same Q-tip if it happens again because what happens is you end up with although the super glue goes on there what you end up with is um, white stains um, on the glass like I have got over here if I can just spin the camera around and zoom in Right, now that I've zoomed in, you can see there I've got a little bit of uh, white um, watermarks, which uh, I'm hoping, once it's all done, 
I can give that a really good clean and that will come off and that's because I've been using the same q-tip over and over again so it's best to use one q-tip um, every time so at last we've actually finished the detailing of the roof that's the windows and the cladding and all that's left to do is to paint it so that's now both sides done and we're into Tuesday evening so we've only got a couple of evenings left before I start putting the video together so it's not perfect by any means but I think I've got what I've been looking for so we have gone from that to that and I've almost nailed it so the next thing to do is to try and match that colour there this green grey if I can do that and this cladding then that will be perfect so that's what I shall do next try and match that colour up and then we've got all the windows to paint I might leave this frame here white or cream but uh, I'll have to look at more photographs first I have been mixing up some colors um, to try and match the existing canopy that we have at the station and I'm gonna go for that one there which is matte 91 it's a Humbrol paint and uh, I think it's gonna work I may have to add uh, black to tone it down but uh, here we are we're finally painting uh, the the roof and um, getting it to this stage after months and months of building and gluing and working out how I'm gonna build this roof to start with this is where it comes to life this is where hopefully we put the icing on the cake and uh, yep I'm, I'm brushing it on so it's going to take a while to do um, I'm not too bothered at the moment if I get any paint on this strip here because that's going to be painted yet and so is that. I'm going to paint that jet black and this of course will be a white frame which will be then toned down uh, to a creamy colour to give it the age uh, that I want but uh, so far this is looking pretty good actually as you can see that's the dried paint if I just zoom you in you can have a closer look I'll turn the camera and as you can see it does it's hard for the camera to pick it up but um, it is a dark grey with a hint of green so that kind of matches what we have on the other canopy and uh, hopefully when it dries out um, that'll be it we'll be finished 
So until then we've got a long way to go. If we zoom you back out, I've only just started. So I've started at this corner here. And we've got right away along there to go yet. Nearly a meter's worth before we turn over and do the other side. So let's see how much we can get done. It's taken a couple of weeks to get to this stage. That's um, adding the window panes on this side and now painted the cladding. So I think we're on target to uh, get this completed before Christmas Eve. That would be great. That would be uh, the icing on the cake, as it were. So, what do you think? You think I'll get it done before Christmas? So close, but I think painting those window frames will take a week. Or so. So I think that's all from me this week. Stay safe everybody and we'll see you again next time or next week. Bye for now. Bye.